Today, we will talk about VFR navigation charts. However, since this topic is a bit long, it will be divided into two parts. In this first video we will see the basic definitions and the different types of VFR charts. While in the second part, we will look at the symbols and graphic representations on VFR charts and their meanings. So without any further ado, let's get started. As we already mentioned in previous videos, aeronautical charts are a set of maps and graphic representations of a particular area specially designed for flight planning and air navigation. And in general terms, we can classify them into two main groups, VFR and IFR charts. This way, VFR charts are designed for visual flight planning, while IFR charts are designed for the planning and execution of instrument flights. Now, in this particular video, we will focus on the VFR charts only. So, with this in mind, depending on their scale, level of detail, and area covered, VFR navigation charts can be classified as follows. Terminal charts. Sectional charts. World aeronautical charts. And some less common ones, such as the jet plotting, global, and operational navigation charts. All of these charts are used for route planning over a relatively large area. However, apart from these, each airport can design their own VFR departure, arrival, or overflight charts. So, with this being said, let's start with the terminal chart, which has a scale of 1 in 250,000. This means that each centimeter measured on the chart is equal to 2.5 kilometers. Now, the main characteristics of this chart is that it covers a relatively small area, usually around one or more major airports or cities. It shows in detail the obstacles, towns, roads, railways, and other relevant landmarks. And also provides detailed aeronautical information of the area and the airspaces. Let's now move on to the sectional chart, which has a scale of 1 in 500,000. This means that each centimeter measured on the chart equals to 5 kilometers. Now, since here the scale is smaller compared to a terminal chart, it will cover a larger area that may include one or more cities. However, since the scale is smaller, this also means that there will be less detail of obstacles, towns, roads and other landmarks, and therefore it provides only the most relevant information of the area and airspaces. Finally, let's look at the World Aeronautical Chart, which is abbreviated as WAC. This chart has a scale of 1 in 1 million, which means that each centimeter measured on the chart is equal to 10 kilometers. Here, since the scale is much smaller, it covers a much wider area that may include several states and provinces. A smaller scale will also mean that there will be little detail of obstacles, towns, roads and other landmarks, and it provides only basic aeronautical information of the area. Now, another chart very similar to this one is the Operational Navigation Chart, which is abbreviated as ONC. This chart also has a scale of 1 in 1 million. However, it has a slightly different symbology, and is normally used in areas for which a world chart has not been produced. This series of aeronautical charts were published by the United States Defense Mapping Agency until the 1990s, which means that these charts are discontinued, and therefore much of the data they contain is outdated. Now, in summary, the different types of VFR charts differ mainly in scale, size of the mapped area, and level of detail. Here we can highlight the terminal area chart, with a scale of 1 in 250,000, which covers a relatively small area with a high level of detail. There is also the sectional chart, with a scale of 1 in 500,000, which covers a medium-sized area with a medium level of detail. And finally there is the World Aeronautical Chart and the Operational Navigation Chart, with a scale of 1 in 1 million, which covers a large area with a low level of detail. Now, the chart to be used for flight planning will depend on how long the route is and the availability of these charts. Now, regarding the nomenclature of these VFR charts, terminal and sectional charts are usually named according to the city or major airport on which they focus. 
The nomenclature of world charts will depend on the system used by the civil aviation authority of each country. And the operational navigation charts are named according to an alphanumeric system of worldwide area division, which we can see here in this image. Now, although the design and symbology of these VFR charts may vary from country to country, they all have certain elements in common, which we will see next. The first thing we will find in any VFR chart is a legend on the side or at the bottom, which includes information regarding the type of chart, the scale, the type of projection used, the effective date, the symbology used, and any other relevant information, such as special flight procedures, communication frequencies, etc. The type of chart specifies if it is a terminal, sectional, world or operational chart, and also includes its identification number or name. In this example, this is the operational navigation chart J24, which covers part of Mexico. Then, the scale of the chart is specified. In this particular example we can see a graphic scale in kilometers, nautical and statute miles, and also a numerical scale that specifies that it is 1 in 1 million. Then we can see the projection used to develop the chart, which in this case is a Lambert conformal conic projection, with the standard parallels being 17 degrees 20 minutes north and 22 degrees 40 minutes north. Then, another important element is the effective date, which will determine the validity of the information published in the chart. For example, the aeronautical information published in this particular chart is valid from October 10, 2019, to April 23, 2020. Now, some of these charts also publish the symbols and graphic representations used, so the pilot can easily consult them. And finally, the chart may also include other relevant information related to communication frequencies, flight procedures, or airspace classification as we can see in this example. So far, we have focused on VFR area charts. However, as we said at the beginning, each airport can design its own charts for VFR flight procedures, such as standard departure, arrival, or overflight routes. In these charts, the structure and symbology used will depend on the provisions of the Civil Aviation Authority of each country or state, so we will not get into detail on this. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.